So it's an amazing little fishery. Um, five years ago, it was probably on its knees. The industry, I guess 10 years ago, there was, there's the bag of bait. It was a thousand tonne fishery. Uh, it was all sold as bait, dollar a kilo. Um, interestingly, as the river flows, declined through the 2000s, so the, this pippy fishery collapsed. But now, and five years ago, the boys were on the beach scratching their head. The fishery had collapsed. Um, we were facing competition from New Zealand, and we've got this little journey that's happened over the last five years. That's about 100 grams of pippies, um, modified atmosphere pack uh, in Etika, Auburn, top I think it's $30 for the 100 grams, so I think that actually might be better than abalone. So that's $300 a kilo uh, retail restaurant. The fishery has 21 quota holders and there's 12 active rakers. Uh, there's the Murray Mouth there uh, near Goolwa. We fish a 60 kilometre area, um, fishing all year round. The current year quota is about 550 tonnes. Now, Robert, I need your help. I'm a backyard economist. Uh, this, to me, looks like the good old economics 101. Supply going down, the fishery collapsing in the 2000s, and our price going up. With that sort of your economics 101, supply and demand. So about five years ago, well, 2007-08, a quota was introduced. I think, is Will Zachran here? I think he oversaw the process of quota was brought in, the fishery bottomed out at about 300 tonnes and the economic principles applied as the fishery started increasing in volume over time, so the price started coming back again. Hence the people were on the beach scratching their heads. At the same time in 2013 we had the claims from Cloudy Bay, New Zealand about going up to two and a half thousand tonnes. So the industry had faced a collapse They'd put a quota in, the stocks were rebuilding. As soon as that started happening, the price started going down again and facing competition from New Zealand. So what did we do about it? The attack was uh, in several um, uh, responses. We weren't a 12-month fishery, so we, we did some trials. To, so we, we tested winter fishing, so we opened the season to 12 months to spread our supply out. We engaged uh, Nick Ruello to look at the market and he came back and said there's a massive market out there. New, uh, New South Wales, I think, used to be 500 tonne fishery. We used to be 1,000. He said there's a lot of Italian restaurants and, fish and the Asians uh, restaurants who uh, want the product but supply is not guaranteed, quality is not guaranteed. It's in big foam boxes and it's messy. So, Get the, get the packaging right, the form right, and the reliability of quality and supply, and there is a market there. We also, uh, while anyone worked in wild fisheries, getting fishing people to work together is always a challenge. Um, so Ewan Cahoon was engaged to work with the industry to develop a, a business structure that could bring the industry together. And we've subsequently adopted that. I had some uh, R&D money through um, the innovation vouchers to look at some product testing, long life product and different packaging. And what dropped out was our MAP product. We stole the ideas basically from mussels and we shifted from a two to three day shelf life to 10 days. We engaged Blue Harvest National to launch this product. We went to um, from zero to 130 tonnes or 30% of our turnover in um, two years. The last thing we did, this, the, an amazing um, change in the, we, the way we approached harvesting. We developed a harvest strategy based on both science and economics. So we built economics into the harvest strategy for the first time in South Australia. We used an old um, uh, agricultural measure, the, the gross margin, a crop gross margin, where basically we look at the volume times the price less the cost that vary with uh, the scale. So as the quota increases, some of the costs change, your harvesting costs, your freight, your transport, to come up with a fishery gross margin. The model was viewed as an alternative to a complex uh, bioeconomic model as a proxy for maximum economic yield. There's a few simplifying assumptions. It's static, it doesn't take into account time, so we're only looking at the annual decision. 
uh, we assume the, the variable costs are stable over, over a range of TACs, which is probably incorrect, but it's marginal to the analysis. And we ignore the fixed costs. It's a small industry. The capital base is low. You've got a couple of Toyota broken down Toyotas like this one on the beach. So there's not a lot of capital shifting. So we can get away with using this measure as a proxy for future profit estimates. A simple strategy for making our TA our quota decisions. We've got to have the stock, so the scientists say, yep, you can go up to 650 tonnes, or it's got to be 400 tonnes. If it is 650 tonnes, we basically make a decision if we expect the gross margin to increase by more than 2.5%, we will increase the quota. If we don't expect it to go up by more than 2.5%, we don't increase the quota. So how have, how have we applied this? So these next two slides are from the actual uh, meetings where we made the decisions. So 2012-13, the scientists said we could take 500, but we made a decision to take 400. So the blue line being the gross value of production, the red line, the variable costs, and the green, the fishery gross margin, over a range of quota, 400, 450, 500. And basically it said, we were at 400. If you put it to 450, we estimate your actual profit from the fishery will go down. So we'll be working harder, more time on the beach and making less money. Same if we went to 500 tonnes. So we didn't change the quota. So, Robert, we had a problem. We had to do it out the marketplace. This is where the modified atmosphere product, the testing had been happening. We thought we were ready to go. So the analysis in the following year was possible for 50 tonnes, decision 400 without, leave it where it is, without any value adding. So that was the analysis. If we do actually impact the market, we can actually improve the gross margin from the... If we don't do the value adding, the analysis said you're actually going to go backwards. The decision was to actually go to 450 because we expected to do the value adding. So, what's actually happened in real life over the five-year period of using this decision model? The first year when we put uh, the quota up, it went from 400 to 450, and the, gross, the fishery gross margin went down, or basically stayed the same. Why? We didn't launch the product. So we actually put more supply on the market, we worked harder and ma basically made the same amount of money. The next year, however, we did launch the product. The price lifted by almost 20%. So we, increased, we didn't change the quota. We launched the product and the price went up. So Robert, what are we doing? Shifting demand. Economics 101. Fishery, uh, there's your fishery gross margin in millions. So the first year stayed about the same. Second year jumped. Third year jumped. Fourth year jumped. Each of these years, we held the quote. Well, that was the biological limit, and we've held the quota below. So as we develop the market, so we don't put, lift the quota until we feel we have the customers ready to go. We have almost doubled the fishery gross margin over this period, the profit from this fishery, in a way where we've actually taken less We've got a biomass out there now. It's actually a beautiful set of numbers. So if you think of the first graph I showed, the returns were going down. Now price is going up, gross margins going up, and the volume's going up. It raises a host of questions, though. We've got two crystal balls involved now compared to the old style of fisheries management, where we used to guess about the biomass and try and make decisions. We're now trying... We spend most of our time arguing. But the price is uh, where we spend our time. So is that better or worse? We have done an ex-post evaluation of our decisions, and the report said that if we knew what the prices were actually going to be, we would have made the same decision which is quite unusual, because the future's pretty hard, but 
the, the analysis has said, yep, we actually did the right thing. So um, the theme is about innovation. Our product was the 10-day shelf life modified atmosphere product live. We launched smoke bees last year in a beautiful uh, and the flavour comes use the oil and pasta and just we also do blast frozen uh, 500 gram packs and next week our first thousand units of a pre-cooked uh, will be launched nationally thank you